So it's probably no secret that I like really love to study and practice mixing and that's usually not a bad thing like for anyone who's out there wondering it does have a pretty high roi for your music production career and if i'm not careful this video could actually turn into like 10 reasons on why you should study it but actually this video is about how much of an l i'm taking because i study it so much See, I'm working on a couple of albums to submit to my sync agents and libraries. And because I'm not going to lie, it's a lot of work. I've really been overthinking the mix because of just the sheer volume of work. <laughs> so I was going through some inspirational videos as I do when I reach these points in my career. And I came across some absolutely legendary and incredibly reassuring information from the absolute goat Metro Boomin. So in this video, I want to share that with you as well as walk you through a practical demonstration of what he talks about because he said it on a podcast so he didn't have fl you know right in front of him with a beat ready to go so no demonstration so i'd like to be that for you hello beautiful person welcome back to the channel my name is chu and that's all the intro you're getting from me today grab my free kit and let's get started metro would you be so kind as to take it away from me don't overthink it bro just just level everything out, basically. That's what I'd be doing. That's what I always did it's from when I was 13 and now. Like, I do the same shit. I just level it out how my, I hear my ear, like, to hear it, you know? Well, everybody different, but me, I want my kick and my snare, like, more on top of the mix. Mm -hmm. Like, just driving everything and just try to kind of fit everything in between level-wise, you know? You know, it's different vibes for different songs. Mm -hmm. It's like a different weather. Like, you're not gonna dress up the same for it. Like, when it's sunny, it was 90 degrees, or when it's 20 degrees. Right. It's just different, like, you know? Like, maybe I'm doing an R&B song with somebody, or maybe, like, the kick or snare don't have to be as blaring or as high, just, like, smacking or, like, you know? It's just different every time. It just depends on what you're trying to do. But I would tell producers, just uh, don't overthink it. Just level it out, like, as you hear it. I feel like people probably just try to, like, overcomplicate it. And that, that's what be happening. I don't think I ever made a beat where I had, like, a I used, like, a compressor or limiter for anything. I don't be doing all that shit, bro. Really, all I do is level everything out. I'll make the whole beat, then... I level out every single like sound and drum sound and everything just one by one. Like from muted from the first thing, then the next thing, level the next thing, the last thing, and just had everything that's on, like pan a little bit, everything that's on place and pocket to like where it's space. It's all about space. More than anything, like yeah, some effects and reverb and shit, but like a lot of the extra shit they be trying to make you think like you need, you really don't for real. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on walking through this process. Let's listen to the beat really quickly. The melody is by Michael Denier, super fire, and he's in my mentorship group. You can learn more about that in the description below. So like 95% of this is gonna be talking about leveling, cause I don't wanna bog this down too much. But anywhere where I can't go too deep, like on the effect stacks, I'll still try to show you everything I'm doing. So on the melody, I have these effects, which is just this equalizer, fruity delay two, which is always this widen preset, and then a patcher stack, which has radiator, RC20, and some reverb. So basically the thought process behind my effect stack on any melody is EQ, delay, and reverb. It will always be some manifestation of that. Getting into leveling, we'll go ahead and just bring everything down. Oh yeah, and then one more thing. I do have the melody also going to this bus, which has these effects on Neutron. It's a tweaked version of the bright sustain preset. And then all of that is being sent from the melody bus to this convolution send, which just does a little bit of reverb. Okay, and now we can level. And as we heard, Metro said he likes to have the kick and the snare to clap be the loudest things driving that bounce. And that's very similar to the big three concept I talk a lot about. And so basically the first step of that is that low end. So it's gonna be that kick, the 808, the bass, any of those things. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. No kick in this beat, but we do have an 808 and some bass. So I like that to be loud, especially when there's no kick. I go as loud as like basically up to zero pretty much. Cause that's where I'd have my kick, maybe like negative one just loud basically there's no i don't really use decibel ranges and i don't think metro really referred to any either so i actually have some bass in this beat too so i'm gonna go ahead and level that in too loud but not as loud as the 808 all right and then I'm gonna turn on my clap with the 808 so I can get into leveling that next thing of the big three. The second part is gonna be that main snare clap. You want it to be loud, 
because it's gonna basically be the second loudest thing in your mix but not as loud as the 808 naturally and then we could bring in this other snare too since it's more of like an accent it's not gonna be as loud but it's still driving that bounce so we want it to be pretty loud that brings us into the bass so because i had a section where it overlaps with the bass but first i want to reference it with these snares to make sure the bass is at a good level to check out how it layers with the 808 i have it filtered for this part so this filter automates on for the bass when it comes back around to that part so i'm just gonna see how that sounds and adjust the volume using this eq right here Okay, then we want to focus on that last element of the big three. Now, if we were mixing a song, it would be the lead vox, so like the vocals for the artist. But since we're doing the beat, we can go ahead and have it be the melody, right? And you want it to be loud and present, but not overpowering the 808 or the clap. That's the key, because these got to be present for your beat to be like loud, bro. That's going to be, it's like manipulating perception, basically. So if you get these three things loud, present, and in good balance, that's the key. Then it's about fitting everything in after that, which we're about to talk about in a second. But let's get this melody level correctly first. boost that convolution just a little bit now I know Metro said not to overthink it and I'm not I'm just solving a problem because I know how to I'm basically gonna send all of my melody to one place because due to the compression the clap is having a hard time cutting through the mix so I'm gonna fix that with sidechain set that ratio on that threshold right there that's perfect then we just mix it in that's beautiful Beautiful. Now we could push that melody even more. That's what I'm talking about. Mix it in a little bit more to make it sound transparent. So my big three is sounding tight and clean. And these days, my big three is the extent to which I would do that overthinking just because I know how important it is to make them sound tight and clean. That being said, side chain is not necessary good leveling will take you further than anything else good leveling and equalization but if y'all want a video on how to finesse and finagle with sidechain just let me know down below you know i got y'all that being said the rest of the play is just fitting everything else in so i'm gonna level in everything while talking you through it now me personally i don't know how other people do it but i like to go for that hi-hat next Then I'm gonna bring in the other hat, which is an open hat right here. I'm gonna EQ it. I usually hit this console EQ on every sound that's not the kick or the 808 or the bass. I'm also gonna go ahead and send every drum sound to this drum room verb, which is literally just this EQ and this reverb. Oh, also the 808 was getting sent to this parallel compression send for saturation and stereo separation, all that good stuff. Pretty light stuff. Check out this video if you wanna learn about how to do the 808 stuff and check out this video if you wanna learn how to do the drum room verb stuff. Just like that, you have a beautifully leveled mix off of some simple concepts. Again, all this buses and sends and stuff, not necessary. I was only showing it to you because this is literally how I make my beats. Even if I was to simplify my mixing down to its bare elements, I would still do this because a lot of this stuff is actually just sound design at this point. It's not even mixing. This is just my style. So if you just apply that big three, use those effects on the melody, and then level everything else in after that. Oh, and bro, of course, 
mix into a soft clipper like just put the fruity soft clipper on the master with these effects which is basically just the effects it loads in with do everything else you'll be good to go but do let me know down below if you guys would like to see a specific video about how i use like mixing to do sound design for my specific style also check out the poll i'm going to be doing a full guide soon and i want to make sure i do the one that you want to see thank you so much for watching get all the free stuff in the description below stay happy stay healthy always be creating just make sure it's dope content only when in doubt make better beats i love you so much i will see you in the next one peace